Hello, it's a new sim release, 0.52b, and I did a little video about this mainly because I was making a trailer for the Steam version and I just published it here, but I wanted to go through in a little bit more detail what each of the things were and what they do and how they affect things so you can uh, make your judgment on that. Anyway, let's jump into sim. I've got my uh, radio connected. Let's get on with it. So let's go ahead and start up the sim because there's a couple of things that are slightly different from the get-go. Um, just some subtle differences, one of which was a really funny little one, which is the fact it always says resume the sim before you start the sim. Now it says start sim and if you go ahead and start it and then go back, then it says resume sim. The other little thing which I did was I noticed that lots of people sort of had problems remembering the sort of short keys for stuff. So what I did is um, I introduced a little sort of scrolling message when you're just sat on the pause screen, just sort of showing you some bits and pieces, mainly the some of the main keys to press and stuff. But anyway, enough of that. Let's, uh, let's jump on in. As I mentioned in the trailer, albeit just by um, putting text up there, when you start, you'll be in uh, regular, regular mode. So the clouds you can see there are basically just a, a 2D background to make it look a little bit more interesting than just the blue sky. So yeah, you press W and this gets you into the weather effects. Um, and when you get the weather effects, you've got this whole list of drop downs here and, and clear, which seems a little bit pointless, will literally just do a clear day. So all the clouds will disappear, but you still got some um, atmospheric effects in terms of there's there's a sort of haze that, that carries on. There's a little bit of fog there, not so much in clear, but clear is essentially like a bit like doing nothing, but you could still get the time going with the sun going up and down. Um, and whenever you change the weather, um, it should it should happen sort of dynamically. So if I set it to partly cloudy, and just put my angle up a bit, you should see clouds start to appear. And this is all part of the sort of transition effects. As you as you go and do stuff, the weather transitions into one thing or the next. These are volumetric clouds, which means they're sort of a 3D shape. And volumetric clouds cast shadows on the ground. You can see we've got some sort of places where light's coming through and we've got some places where we're darkening out. Now this sort of system is, is quite heavy on compute power and graphics cards so if you've got one of the older systems that you're having great success running this this might murder it a little bit. So this is fine for modern systems if you've got something old like the, I know people are running on 10 year old laptops this is going to struggle. Now there's two things you could do. One of course is you can turn the weather system off completely that's one thing. The, the other thing is turn the graphics level of the weather system down. Now what this essentially does is this changes from 3D volumetric clouds into a 2D representation of them and I've turned off the shadow casting. And that will save you about 10 or 15 frames a second depending on, on your computer. And it still looks you know reasonable and you still have all the, the various cloud effects uh, happening and, and the wind and stuff from doing it. But of course if that is too slow for you um, turn the weather system off completely and you can literally just untick the box and you're back to normal. And the other system I talked about again in the video, it sets the most clear, is the time of day. I, I really liked, it. well I enjoyed watching the time of day flowing and you can literally say I want um, a one minute length uh, day and uh, and just sort of happily watch the sun move really really quickly. The sun will set over by the city uh, and if we fly along here we can see it zooming down the sky. Of course you probably wouldn't do a one minute day cycle and night cycle. You can see the shadows coming out and you can see the nice colours as it goes and we can also see it turn into night. We've got the night cycle here and the stars and if we look over here somewhere there's the moon going up in the sky. Um, and similarly if we uh, pretty much sit here and, and wait for a minute to see that moon disappear we all get the sun coming up. Now one of the reasons I've messed about with weather is graphically I, I can't do much. I can't draw, I can't model and doing this sort of thing uh, allows me to use sort of fancy shader and post-processing effects uh, and this sort of generates sort of new colours 
uh, and new ways of looking at the landscape. Stuff that I can't do with my non-existent artistic skills, but the sort of system helps me do uh, by the fact it, it's basically coming out with with new colours uh, and new sort of ways of looking at the landscape. And I actually think that the the sunrise over the valley is absolutely gorgeous. On a serious note, of course, instead of just looking at the sun going up and down, the, the idea is kind of like, you can set this to how you normally fly. Um, a lot of us, certainly in the UK, even in the summer, will have the sun sat in our face all the time because it very rarely gets up very high in the sky. So you can uh, simulate that if you want. Similarly, of course, um, you can simulate the sort of conditions you might have. Like, let's let's stop the time flowing. Let let's set it to um, a cloudy day. I mean, I guess on a simulator you're looking to exclude the type of weather you'd normally have. But hey, you can put it on here just to make sure you're used to flying in those circumstances. And there's things you know you wouldn't choose to use here. So we could set our weather to heavy snow which is something I don't think many people would really want to fly in. Maybe they would. Um, it's a little bit crazy and that's kind of just a bit of fun behind it. Now I should point out with all these types of weather, there is nothing in it that actually affects the, the way your quad flies. It's mostly a cosmetic effect. I mean, with snow, we've got the old piece of snow coming on the camera lens and, and causing some sort of distortions, which is quite good fun. And although you see here we've got the wind whistling through the trees, the wind isn't having any actual effect on the quad um, or the plane. It might do in the future if I put that in, but right now it's just a cosmetic fun thing to play with. So all the weather effects are available in the pull down and you can do what you like. But another thing you might want to do is as you're flying along and you know it's like, oh, it's boring flying along, you can just press Z and it'll come up with a, a new weather thing. Partly cloudy, it's slightly more than mostly clear, heavy snow, and you can just literally keep pressing it. And as you keep pressing that Z button, it will just transition into whatever particular effect you've come up with, uh, which is, is sometimes fun, uh, just to sort of break it up a bit. Like, what's it like flying in the fog? Well, it's it reminds me a bit of what it's like looking out the window at the moment here, back in England. There are some imperfections in the weather. Like I said, it's just a bit of fun. If you find that hail is managing to go through the buildings, yep, yeah, I know about it. Maybe we'll look at it in the future. Um, but right now it's it's kind of just as it is. Anyway, so the other slightly more exciting detail I know for many of you will be the addition of a few new objects. And these are the cooling towers. Uh, I didn't model this. I, I bought it as an asset. And then I had to remodel some of it because it was a, a bit tricky to fly. But I've kind of used these as a sort of easy, medium and hard effect of the cooling towers. So if we um, move over to this one, I've, I've decided this is the active one with the steam. Now this big one here, I'm calling the easiest one. If you notice around the outside, it's got no real exterior details. If you notice these smaller ones, they have around the outside some sort of safety stuff and uh, a ladder where people could normally go up. So the big one is the easiest one. So it, it's larger, so it's easier to get into. You've got nothing in the bottom. You've got nothing surrounding the top. So you should be able to just dive in uh, and come through the sort of bit in the, in the back. So the one without any steam coming out, I call the medium one, which is smaller. Um, it has some sort of scaffolding, the sort of safety stuff at the bottom. But again, it's pretty okay here. And then this last one, which I'm calling the hard one. This is how I got it um, when it was a pre-built asset. If I look inside, it's got some extra mesh, which I've crashed into. Uh, so this is what I removed from the other one. Fortunately, my modeling ability let me at least go and delete stuff. So this is a little bit harder to fly through. Uh, and I've put the steam in there just to say, hey, this one's active. This is a uh, one to... Uh, challenge you a bit more. It's doable. And obviously you've got the ability to sort of surf the outside of the towers there if that floats your boat. Now the final thing I talked about was the user drivable car. And this is a little bit different and I've called it very much an experimental thing. If you go in the scenarios menu, which you do by pressing space, uh, you can now 
flip between quad, plane and car. And if we then launch the car, it looks like this. And the default view is this arcade view. And if you press C for the camera, you'd go to an FPV view. Um, now I've set up the control really weird for this because when I was last using an FPV car, this is how I laid it out. So I've got my pitch and roll as steering and acceleration reverse and this as my camera stick for FPV. And this is going to seem a little bit weird. It's just a, a way I laid it out last time I used it. So the arcade camera is probably going to be uh, very familiar to anybody who's ever played any sort of racing game. You can sort of race about with it. Um, and it'll kind of follow you around um, a bit. Um, if we flick to the FPV camera, as I said, you've got... The reason I did it like this, uh, use the throttle as my height, is because it's like you can kind of leave it there and it'll stay. Whereas the other camera, you kind of spring back to the centre if you wanted to. Uh, I've actually had it in the past where I've had like a continuous servo rotation. I just sort of move it out a little bit and then move it back. But yeah, if you want to drive around like this, you, you most certainly can do and you can like look behind and you can sort of, you know, go places and stuff uh, and, and do your thing and explore. The, the idea of this one is to see A, if people think the control method is stupid or you'd want something else. B, if you think it's worthwhile having a car in the sim. Um, and if so, I would take it forward into the online game. Right now, the online game doesn't include the car and it doesn't include weather effects. The reason it doesn't include the weather effects is because when we're talking about people on lots and lots of different types of machine which might be able to handle it and might not be able to handle it as well, I didn't want to mix it up so I've gone with the sort of default of nothing. Um, the car could be brought forward, it isn't at the moment. The, the cooling towers are in the online uh, version of the game so you can go and, and play those straight away with your friends if you want to. The other thing that I mentioned is I changed the uh, rates, the default rates on the plane. However, if you've already got a copy of this, um, your rates that you'd use would have been saved. So you can either go through and reset everything, uh, which would look like this, but that would also take out a load of other settings you've done. Uh, the other thing you could do is uh, literally just look at what's on the screen here. If I turn that around. Those, those new rates, literally aileron rate of 10, elevator of and rudder of 30 with a throttle multiplier of 035. And I'll show you what this looks like if I actually go ahead and, and launch the plane. You can see my stick movement here. If I go all the way over now, you see it's a much gentler movement uh, and the rudder is almost non-existent. And it's not quite as powerful. Um, perhaps perhaps it was a bit overpowered. I always said to people, hey, be a bit more gentle, but you know, you can now slam the sticks around and nothing bad's going to happen. Now, I didn't want to go on about the plane too much because at some point that entire flight dynamic system is getting rewritten. When I wrote this, it was basically me and five post-it notes trying to work out how I would do it. And yeah, I came up with something that felt a a little like a plane. I'm quite sort of happy with the way it sort of stalls out and, and decelerates and stuff but it's certainly not perfect and it's not even it's not even what I would call good. I have since discovered uh, some guy at NASA wrote some open source flight dynamics program um, and I'm going to take a look at that code at some point and see if I can transfer some of that knowledge into this and, and make a new flight dynamics model. It's it's not quite the case if you just cut and paste it. It's, it's quite a large code base and there's loads that uh, don't relate to me in the way like my graphics are set up or my physics are set up and stuff like that. And it's in a slightly different language. It's in, I think it's in C++ instead of C Sharp. But um, I only want to take the basic calculations about how he works out his sort of lift and, and wing area and, and stuff like that. I think that will translate quite nicely. But that's, that's a future thing. Also, as far as future things go, I did set up a new issue so I could try and create a roadmap of where I was going in the next few releases. So some of it is like anybody comes up with bugs or things they think should be sorted out or implemented immediately, then I, I take those in consideration. But for the next one, uh, 053, I'm going to be working on one of which is individual rates for the quads. Um, lots of people have, have asked about, oh, I sort of tend to separate out my yaw and my roll and pitch are slightly different. How do you do that? And I've just lumped all the... Um, rates together. So I want to separate those out 
and maybe go away from using sort of the number keys because that's hard for everybody to remember. If I have a single button and maybe try and draw up the sort of graph that Betaflight would give you so you get the idea of what your stick response is, that might be quite good. The other thing I wanted to do is a single player game idea using a quad. I have started on this and it, it involves the beach ball but what I found is hitting the beach ball with a quad in any sort of sort of accurate sense is really quite difficult so it needs to be challenging but not too hard that it it's too hard for people coming into it so I need to do a lot more iterations of that one and figure out how to do it but I'll, I'll be sort of releasing some stuff as and when I can do that and then um, the the one after that I'm intending to work putting in more sort of I wouldn't say traditional racetracks, but racetracks where you can go around them and time your laps and things like that and, and see how you do. But yeah, that's that's this release, so I hope you uh, can go out and have some fun with it. And of course, if you find any problems, you can comment down below, you can open an issue, you can ping me an email, they're all down there below so you can see what's happening. And of course, if anybody's got any burning issues or new features that they think would be really cool, then you can do the same and, and ask about them and I, I certainly take it under consideration. Mostly. It's it's all about time. I, uh, there's loads and loads I'd like to do and loads and loads I haven't planned. It's just getting the time to do it all. But, you know, I just do a little bit and I put a release out and we just keep going and see where it, where it ends up. So the release for GitHub users, uh, you'll find links down below to GitHub. If you're on Steam, I've already set it to um, active, so it, it should have updated. And for the guys that were doing some beta stream testing for me on Steam, I've also set this active release to the beta so you don't have to pull out the beta to, to get it. it. It'll just automatically update for you. Fingers crossed at least. If not, tell me. Anyway, I hope that's good. I hope you have fun with it and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.